Kimberly Hall, and today's video is on how to customize a doormat. So I see all over the internet that people are making these doormats or they wanna know how to make them. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step everything you need to know in order to make these doormats. So we're gonna go over all of the materials you'll need, what tools you'll need, some alternative tools if you don't have the tools that I'm using, and then it will make a cute doormat that says crafting come back later, which is always true. All right, let's get started. Here are all of the items that we'll need for this class. Starting with the doormat, I bought this from Ikea. It's the smaller size and it's only $4 and I will link the products all in the description below. We will be cutting a stencil on our Cricut machine out of freezer paper. It is important that you get freezer paper because one side is coated in wax and one is not. So this is my non-waxy side and this is my waxy side. So I trimmed down a piece that is 12 by 24 inches and it's 150 square feet. So this will last you a long time. Um, and then to transfer our stencil, I have some heat resistant transfer tape, which I will show you how to use. It's really helpful, but it is optional and we'll be using our Cricut to cut. I use the light grip machine cutting mat because this is pretty delicate. So I like to um, cut it on the light grip and then it makes it really easy to peel off and transfer. So I have a 12 by 24 mat. Then to paint our stencil, I have this acrylic paint. It's permanent. I don't seal my mats and they've lasted. I have one outside my house right now that looks brand new and it's been there out, um, outside for a year in the Utah elements. So permanent acrylic paint. And I put mine in a little squeeze bottle and that just helps me control where the paint is actually going. So I really like the squeeze bottle. I have some pins. Um, these pins are great to hold down any intricate parts of your stencil. They're sewing pins and they're all metal and they're a half inch long. And then the last thing you may need is an easy press. You can also use a household iron, but I love my easy press because it's such a big heat plate. So we're gonna use that to transfer on our stencil. Okay, so let's get started in Design Space and we'll get cutting. Here is Design Space. I have already designed a cut file and I will add a link to this cut image for crafting. So I took that from another image and the thing I love about Cricut is that you can really customize using images you find from other resources. So this is from the Silhouette Design Store, um, just the crafting part. And I just took that word and then typed out, come back later. So I was able to make my own custom phrase for my doormat. I drew a rectangle in here. It's 16 by 24 inches, just so I could figure out how big I wanted my writing. But we're actually gonna delete that before I cut. So this is just a reference rectangle so that I know what my mat will look like when I'm done. So we'll delete that and then I have my image ready to go. So we're gonna click make it, and then it will give a warning that says your image is larger than the 11 and a half inch width. So you'll need that big cutting mat, which I showed you. So this is the long cutting mat. And then what I do is I zoom out so I can see my entire mat, and I just eyeball it so it's kind of in the center so that when I make my stencil, I have enough room around so that I don't have to worry about the paint going over the edges. Okay, so now we have our design set up. We're gonna click continue. Again, I'm using my Cricut Maker. You can also use a Cricut Explore Air 2 or any other cutting machine. Your software may just look a little bit different. So I'm gonna browse all materials on Cricut. There is a setting for freezer paper. So I'm going to use that cut setting. I found that it works really well. So we're gonna select that. I do add a little bit more pressure. So under pressure, we'll just increase that to more. And then I'm going to load my freezer paper on the mat and send it to the machine. So again, there's two sides to the freezer paper. There's that waxy coated side and the dull side. So we'll wanna make sure to put the waxy side down on the cutting mat. And a tip that I've seen is that if you work from your Cricut base, so that your material doesn't stick on there. You can kind of roll up your material sitting on your machine and then just use the top of your mat and just stick on the top. 
So that way you're not fighting the material and having it stick all the way down. And then you can kind of pull out your mat like this. And so see how I got it stuck on there, but you just want to hold it up and smooth it down. So again, my waxy side is down on the mat. My dull side is facing me. After your material is on your mat, you're going to load it into your machine. And then when it's ready, you'll click the flashing C. So once your cutting machine is done cutting, you will have something that looks like this. I have kind of some pieces popping up, but that's okay because we're actually going to peel out all the pieces that we'll be painting. So you kind of just have to use your fingers or tweezers works really well. And you're gonna be peeling out the parts that will be black. So you'll wanna keep the insides of your letters intact because those will be protecting your mat from getting paint on them. So you'll go through and you'll take out all the pieces and then we'll paint that stencil in. So right now your project should look like this and it's still on your cutting mat. Now to take it off the cutting mat, it is kind of a challenge if you don't use heat resistant transfer tape. So this is a sheet of basically tape that we're gonna cover our image with and then transfer it onto our mat. So if I were to peel this off right now, it's really flimsy and all those insides of the letters we would have to manually place. So what we're gonna do is take this sheet of tape and it is special tape because it's heat resistant. So it'll stand up to the heat of an iron or an easy press. And we're going to stick it on to our design right on top. So again, this is before you unload the mat, you're just going to slide this on so that it catches all of the insides of your letters and we'll put it onto the mat. And this is reusable. So I bought this on Amazon. And again, I'll link everything in the materials list, but you can reuse it. So it's not just one and done. Um, and I'm using two sheets because my image is a little bit big. So we'll cover it all the way up, smooth it out, kind of burnish it on with our hands, and then we're gonna flip it over and peel it off. So I like to peel my mat away from my material. And that's because I have so many little inside pieces that I wanna make sure stay on the transfer tape. So now that everything is on our carrier sheet, you can see that those inside letters are on there and we're gonna transfer it onto our mat. So you can line it up on your mat, measure it out, and then while you're measuring it out, you'll wanna power on your iron or your easy press. And I just heat mine up to 310 degrees. Those are made up Carly Hall settings, but I just press until I feel like it's secure. So we'll wait for this to heat up and then you'll line this all up and get it ready to transfer. Once your easy press or iron is hot enough, you're just going to place it in each section. And I just heat mine for 30 seconds. And again, that's a made up setting. So I just kind of feel it out and see what transfer is the best. And I just move around. You don't have to stay in one spot, but I'll show you how it looks and then I'll show you the completed product so that you can see how well it sticks. It doesn't have to stick perfectly, just enough to hold the stencil in place. So you can kind of see that it's melting on there, whereas this part is still puffed up. So I'll just keep on moving over. And if you have a bigger easy press, that'll also work great because then you can cover more surface area at a time. But the key is really just to make sure your insides of your letters are sticking. So we'll let that cool down and then we'll peel off the tape so we can paint it in. So after you've used your iron or easy press, we are going to use these little pins. And I haven't taken off my liner yet, my transfer tape. So I'm just gonna take my tiny pins and put them in all four corners. And that will help hold down my freezer paper since it's not completely stuck on. So if yours is not stuck on, that's okay. We are going to continue to press it. This is the most time intensive process um, of the whole thing. So this one, this is kind of where you need a little bit of patience. We're just gonna peel back the transfer tape and kind of hold down our stencil. Don't get too hung up on if your pieces are coming up. We're going to press it again, but this is really just to get our stencil in almost perfect position. 
we'll clean it up in just a second. So after you peel off your liner, remember you can save these two sheets. You can just peel them apart and save them for another doormat, another project. These ones do have a little bit of doormat coir on them, so probably good for another uh, doormat or two. Now our doormat is ready to pin in place, so I have these tiny little pins, and it's really important to have tiny pins because you can kind of stab them at an angle, and then when we put our press over the top again, we kind of we can just kind of press right over the pins. So you'll see that I'm stabbing at an angle, just going to the edges, and that is held in place for the most part, but we are going to use our easy press and heat it up again. And anywhere that looks like it's loose and just not connected to anything else, I stick a pin in it. We're going to paint right over these pins so you can toss the whole stencil in the trash with the pins so I buy my pins in bulk. The only real negative I feel to, uh, to freezer paper is that it's not reusable. So I would love to make a stencil um, that says crafting, be back later, or come back later, um, and be able to reuse the stencil so I can you know, make a couple of them for my friends. So I think that in order to do a reusable stencil, which I've done in the past with poster board, you do have to choose a stencil font. So something where the insides of the letters are actually connected. I'm using just a regular font so the inside letters fall out and that's why I'm having to pin them into place. So after you've pinned everything in place, this is an extra additional step, but I do like to go over it with my Easy Press one more time because now we don't have that liner on the top or the heat resistant transfer tape rather. So that way the contact from the heat plate to the wax is a little bit closer. So I feel like it really does tighten up your stencil and has it kind of better grip on the actual mat so it's not moving nearly as much. So kind of just use your judgment and see how much you need to heat it up. I did boost up my temperature. You'll notice that it's up to 330. And then you'll just wanna make sure that your little baby pieces are straight when you go to paint. I did forget to mention a paintbrush in my supplies, so you will, will need a paintbrush. The squeeze bottle will get you pretty far, but I do like to use a paintbrush to really get down into the coir of the mat, so that is also very helpful to have. So now that your mat is all prepped and ready to go, after you pin it, you wanna make sure to take your easy press or iron and just kind of go over it one more time to make sure all your pieces are in there. And now we have our paintbrush and our paint and we're just going to start painting. You can be really generous with your paint because of the wax behind the uh, freezer paper. So when you are painting, you really don't have to worry about it bleeding through. So I just kind of ice it in like I'm icing a cake, very thick, and then I take my paintbrush and just kind of push it down into the mat. And I think that's why my mats hold up so well is because it's not just sitting on the surface, it's really going down into the fibers of the mat. So you'll just go over every bit of your mat, and I do at least two coats, sometimes three, depending on what I'm using the mat for. Is it going outside, is it an in indoor mat? And I'll show you my mat that's been outside my house for a year. It is still in pretty good condition, and I did this exact technique. After you have finished painting, I do at least two coats, usually three. For this project, I just did two. And after you are completely done painting, you're going to peel it off. I typically don't let it dry completely. I peel it while it's still wet, so I have a trash bag ready to go to drop my scraps in so that it doesn't get everywhere. So we're gonna start by taking the insides of the letters out and then peeling away the rest of the stencil. I have my handy dandy craft tweezers and I'm just going to peel the insides out and drop them right into the trash bag. And you don't need to worry about the order you're going in as long as you just get all the insides. It's really easy to miss different pieces. So if you pull up your design on your computer, that's helpful so you can see where all of the inside pieces are. And you can see so, so far so good. 
All of the paint has stayed behind the stencil pieces. Nice and clean, crisp lines, which is always a good sign. I get worried about little pieces, so we'll see how the whole design comes out, but so far, so good. Okay, I think I got all the inside pieces. Now the moment of truth, we're gonna do the big piece, and you'll notice that I'm just throwing the pins in the trash with it. Oh, I have some inside pieces I missed. But I just throw all the pins in the trash too because I don't wanna mess with having to clean those off. So all those in the trash, and then you can see all of the inside pieces I missed. So we'll just peel those out. So again, you'll have to let me know if you end up making a mat, what your phrase is, because I love seeing what every, every phrase that people come up with, they're so clever. I wanted to show you, this is a doormat that I made a year ago, and you can see that it has held up pretty well. I live in Utah, so we have a lot of weather here, um, a lot of snow, so it, the paint held up really well. Really, it's just the fibers of the mat that are coming off, but I did not seal this mat, and I used the exact same permanent paint on this mat, so it does hold up really well, and I could go back in and touch that up if I needed to. Here is my final doormat. I think it turned out so cute. I'm really happy with how crisp it is. So if you're looking for the paint and all the other materials that I use, they're in the description of this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, I would love if you like it. And if you're looking for more craft tutorials, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications so that you're notified every time I post a new video. All right, I'll see you in the next video.